before I take you guys on a tour of what I have dubbed my beauty room slash office, I wanted to do a decluttering series. So basically, I want to go through my entire makeup collection, face products, cheek products, lip products, nail polish, hair stuff, and declutter it to a much more manageable and concise collection. Because I have, over the years, accumulated a lot of products, not everything I absolutely love, and I just want to fill my space with products that I use on a regular basis and that I absolutely love. So this decluttering series was absolutely inspired by my beautiful friend Leslie from Petite Pear Style. I am obsessed with watching her decluttering videos. Not only does she do makeup, but she also does like home goods and clothes and scarves. It's just, I find it so addictive watching her decluttering videos. I will link her channel below if you have not checked it out before and I'll also link to her playlist of decluttering videos because honestly they're, they're pretty addictive. So over the course of the next few weeks, I'm going to do my best to upload a fairly regular uh, decluttering video so I'm going to start today with bases and by bases I mean tinted moisturizers foundations powder foundations and also setting powders if you have been watching my vlogs you've probably caught snippets of my makeup storage solution because I store pretty much most of my makeup in my beauty room and I kind of wanted to show you guys the um, the process of putting this room together. In case you haven't seen those, then I will let you know that I basically store my makeup in three different areas. The first area is in my Alex drawer. So I do have a five drawer Alex set. The Alex drawer set is where I hold the main bulk of my makeup. I also store makeup products and other extra products behind me on my Billy bookcases. So if you have seen maybe on Instagram, aside from the lip products that I store in Muji drawers on my Billy bookcases, um, all the other products um, in my Billy bookcase are not really products that I frequent to often. They're basically just extras of things or just like a, a subsidiary location for products that I don't really reach for that much. So the last place I store my makeup is in the bathroom. I have another Muji drawer where I put my day-to-day makeup. So I usually try to switch the products out in the Muji drawers in my bathroom. Usually once a week or once every two weeks I switch out everything. So I switch out you know the base that I'm using, the powders, the blushes, the highlighters, all of that stuff. Um, and I also store skincare in the bathroom. That setup just really works for me. I actually never get ready in this room. I always get ready in the bathroom. It's just easy um, and I just I prefer it that way. So those are the three places that I have makeup stored. Like I said, today's decluttering session is going to be all about bases. So I am going to take a couple minutes to round up all of the products that I have and I'll be right back. <music> basically all of the cream and liquid bases that I currently have in my collection. I'm pretty sure. I didn't double check but I'm pretty sure this is most of it. So no one person needs this many products in their life so I'm going to try to cut it down. Okay, I'm going to go through each of these foundations one by one and tell you guys which ones I like and I'm going to keep and which ones that I don't like as much and I'm going to donate or give away. I will start with these two. These are the CoverGirl Clean Whipped Cream Foundation. I like the concept of this. It's a like kind of like a mousse texture. Um, they're fairly easy to apply, lightweight. Um, I just don't really like it on my skin. I just don't feel like it, it looked natural on my skin and that's really what I look for. I'm going to say goodbye to both of these because I just, uh, I don't really like it on my skin and um, I never ever reach for it. This is the Ready Set Gorgeous um, Fresh Complexion Oil-Free Foundation from CoverGirl. I heard really great things about this. 
I haven't even tried this because this is a press sample actually, but it's a bit too light for me, uh, 120. So maybe I will pick up a shade that's more my color. Um, but for this one, which is nude beige, I'm going to say goodbye to. This is the Lancome Skin Correcting Makeup Duo. I do like this. Um, I don't use it quite regularly because it is more of a medium to full coverage product and that's not something I really gravitate towards. But this is the one with the concealer on the top and then the foundation on the bottom. It has a nice little pump. I will say that the foundation is really good. The concealer is not so good. I find it's a bit too dry for me, but overall I do like this product, so I'll keep it. The Shantikai Just Skin, absolutely obsessed with this stuff. I think this is my second or third tube, I don't even know. But even though there's only a little bit left in here, I'm going to keep it and use it all up because obviously it was pretty pricey, so I want to savor every last drop of this. The Olay Total Effects CC Cream, I did like this. Um, however, I'm not going to keep it because I just didn't love it. Um, so it is nice, it acts more of a moisturizer than a tone correcting product, um, but it's just not for me, so I'm going to say goodbye to this one. The Neutrogena Healthy Skin CC Cream. This one, however, I love. This one is a really great product. Um, it's light to medium, it's as dark as it gets, but I just like it to wear on those days where I want a quick, um, easy face and uh, this just gives my skin a really great wash of color without being too heavy So definitely keeping this one the covergirl true blend liquid makeup also really like this um, This is more of a medium coverage foundation. So again, I don't really wear it that often um, But it is a really nice formulation But because I don't wear it very regularly if at all I probably only used it like once or twice since I got it um, I'm just gonna say goodbye to this because to me that says that um, it's not, you know, not really a love of mine. So I do like the formulation, but again, just not for me, I guess. So this is basically a sunscreen that has a bit of a tint to it. I love it though. It works really well under makeup or alone. So I'm definitely going to keep this because it's just a great sheer wash of color again on the skin. The Tan Couture from Givenchy. This is the long wearing fluid foundation. I also really, really like this. It surprisingly holds up really well on my combination skin. So I'm definitely going to be keeping this one. The CoverGirl Plus Olay Facelift Effect Firming Makeup. This is in light, which is too light for me. So I'm going to say goodbye to this one. Um, I haven't even actually tried it because um, it's just the wrong shade for me. The Avon Flawless CC Color Corrector Cream. This I actually really like. It has a, an SPF of 50, which is great. Um, this is in the shade Medium. It's actually a perfect um, match for me. The packaging is a bit messy though, so I'm not a huge fan of that. But um, it applies really well. It has pretty good longevity and I like the sheer coverage that it gives. The Olay CC Cream, again, not really for me. I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of the Olay CC products. Um, they do, they're nice. Um, they're, they're really moisturizing from what I, from what I noticed. Um, but uh, as for the overall effect of them, I'm just not a huge fan. I'm just going to say goodbye to this one. The Jouer Matte Moisture Tint. This was really hyped up um, and I don't regret picking it up because it works really well. Um, it isn't super, super matte. It still has a, a kind of a natural finish on me and has a pretty good longevity considering I have combination skin. The Dior Skin Nude Air um, Serum Foundation. I really, really like this. I just This is probably the most recent purchase of mine, um, but I love it. I love the fact that it's so lightweight and it feels like skin when you apply it. So I definitely don't regret this and i um, definitely going to keep it. I'm in the shade 30 in this, by the way. Only a few more to go. This is the Becca Luminous Skin Color. This is dubbed as an ultra sheer foundation, but it's definitely more of like a tinted moisturizer, a sheer tinted moisturizer. But I still do really like it, um, not really in the summer because it doesn't really hold up that well in the heat, but in the winter, this is really great and fairly moisturizing. And again, just that great wash of color, um, nothing too heavy. The Physician's Formula, this is from their, their Nude Wear Touch of Glow collection. 
Love this stuff. Again, the formulation is really great. Um, this is in the shade medium, light medium, and it's a pretty good color match. Um, I don't really enjoy the packaging. As you can see, it leaks a little bit, um, but it kind of makes up for it in the rose gold. But it is a really great product. Um, wears really well. Application is really great. It also comes with like, a little brush, but I'm definitely going to keep this because I love to use this. The Hydra Life BB from Dior. Also really, really like this. As you can see, I'm definitely more of a tinted moisturizer BB person. I don't like anything that's too full coverage. It's just, I don't, it doesn't feel natural on my skin. Um, but this one I really love. It's just like a perfect mixture of hydration and color correcting. So um, definitely going to keep this. And then the last liquid product I have is the Makeup Forever HD Foundation, which I used to love, but now I don't. So I'm going to be saying goodbye to this. I'm just not a fan of it anymore. Um, I am going to probably try the new version, the Ultra HD Foundation, because this is technically discontinued now. They've replaced it with a newer version. But um, I don't know, I just fell out of love with this. So I'm going to say goodbye to it. Okay, moving on to powders. So these are the powder foundations that I have. I only have a few. Uh, first one is the Too Faced um, Cocoa Powder Foundation, which is amazing. I love this stuff. Uh, definitely going to keep this. It just works really well, especially in the summertime. Powder foundations are great in the summertime, I find. This is the Pure Pressed Mineral Makeup. This is one of my favorite uh, powder foundations and I still love it to this day. I actually haven't pulled this out in a really long time, so I'm glad I'm doing this decluttering because I feel like I kind of forgot about this. But it's such a great, easy powder foundation to use, especially again in the summer. This is another compact foundation from Givenchy. It's kind of to go with their Tant Couture. Um, so I do really like this too. It comes with the tinted powder and also what they claim as a highlighter, which it's not really a highlighter, it's like a pink powder, but if you mix it all together, it's actually a really flattering look. So I'm definitely going to keep this, plus very cute packaging. These are from Mark. These are pressed perfecting powders. These are kind of more like powder foundations. I am only going to keep for myself the light version because it's more of a, a match to my skin tone. The other one is medium, medium dark and uh, it's a bit too dark for me. But um, for editorial purposes, I'm going to keep both of them for the time being until I do a blog post, but I do like this a lot actually. Um, but they apply so beautifully, so they definitely deserve a blog post. Moving on to powders. So these are all of the setting powders that I currently have in my collection. So the first one is this brightening powder. So I don't know really where this falls under because it's not really a highlight and it's not necessarily a setting powder, but I feel like it's more of a finishing powder. So that's why I am including it. It is actually really nice. It's great if you want more of a glowy finish. Um, it actually complements any highlighter that you use and um, it's not glittery or anything, which is great. I don't really use this to, for application. It's just really just there to prevent it from getting everywhere. So I will keep the Sonia Kashuk Brightening Powder because, well, I also wouldn't be able to get this uh, very easily anymore since we don't have a target. This is the Ben Nye Banana Luxury Powder. So this, um, I like it, but I don't like it. I think it's because I had really high expectations for this because uh, I heard everyone raving about it. Um, I do like it, but it's just not mind-blowingly amazing. So I will keep it, but it's not something that I'm gonna recommend everyone to like go out and buy because it's a must-have or anything. The Bare Minerals Mineral Veil, this is the tinted one. Really great setting powder. I have been using this a lot more because it is tinted and um, this tint only suits me in the summer when I've gotten a little bit more sun. Otherwise, it's a bit too dark. So in the winter, I never really get a chance to use this. So I've been using this a lot lately. So I'm going to be keeping that one. I feel like I'm gonna be keeping all of these powders, really. This is the Derma Blend Setting Powder. This stuff is really, really good. 
Um, the trick with this is you have to let it sit on your skin for a little bit. I know it kind of seems weird to let a powder sit, um, but it just works so much better that way and it will literally hold your makeup for the entire day. So this is actually really, really good stuff. This is the Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Sheer Powder in number 30. I actually broke the compact on this, so it's a bit wiggly. Um, but this is again more of a finishing powder. It smells amazing and it looks beautiful on the skin. Keeping that one. The Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Diffused Light. I only just started using this again because I was really trying to use up my other powder in dim light. But this is really great for under the eyes. It really helps brighten the under eye area. So definitely keeping this one. This is the Becca Blotting Powder Perfector, the tinted version. Love this for the summer too. It's really great for just keeping those oils at bay on my T-zone. Um, so definitely going to keep this one. And then the last powder is this Trio from Hourglass. It's the um, Ambient Lighting Palette. So I'm just including this as part of the powders because these are mostly finishing powders. So there's Dim Light, uh, Radiant Light, and Incandescent. And uh, love this palette, love these powders. So definitely going to keep this. So these products are what I will be parting with and then the rest of these I will be keeping. So as I go along, um, I'm really going to evaluate what made the cut and if I feel like something is really, you know, not doing it for me anymore, I will um, just part with it because everything's a sunk cost. I mean, there's no point hanging on to something that you're never going to use, right? So that concludes the first installment of my makeup decluttering series. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I really thought I would get rid of a lot more stuff than I did, but I am glad to have gotten rid of the stuff that I did. Please check back on my channel in the next few days because I will have my second installment up. I think I'm going to do eyes next, so eyeliners, mascaras, eyeshadows. Um, which will be pretty interesting because I have quite a few of the aforementioned things considering I don't wear that stuff on a regular basis. So thank you guys again for watching and I will see you guys very soon in my next decluttering video. Bye!